Welcome back guys. Okay, so in the previous lecture we have started building our parser and implemented numeric literals. Uh, that is the only AST node our parser recognizes is the uh, numeric literal node. And we also have said that each uh, AST node should have a type. Currently our program just returns the numeric literal, uh, but let's actually introduce a separate type for the program. So from now on the program will be of its own type, the program. Uh, which will contain the body, uh, which for now will be just still numeric literal. Let's check whether it works. And yes, uh, our AST is now of type program, uh, which body is the numeric literal. And we've been treating the whole string as just the number. In today's lecture, we're going to introduce the tokenizer. And recall from the previous lecture, the purpose of the tokenizer is exactly to extract a stream of tokens of different types. Uh, right, we will introduce the number token which is uh, specifically in our grammar rule for the numeric literal. And we also introduced today the string token, right? We will introduce the strings. So let's start from defining the uh, tokenizer class, okay? And the main API method here is uh, the string initializing. All right, let's have the method which is called init, uh, and it should initialize the string. And uh, since the tokenizer works with individual characters, right? It has to group individual characters into tokens, it has to track the position of uh, each character and we'll be tracking it in the cursor property. And the tokenizer should return the next token on demand. And this is exactly the main API method, which is called getNextToken uh, and which will be called from the parser. Now, the first thing we check, if there are no more tokens, right? If we don't have any more tokens, uh, we just return null. So let's introduce this new helper method, which is also in the tokenizer API, has more tokens. And the condition here is uh, our cursor is still hasn't reached the end of the string, right? That is the string length. Otherwise, we have to recognize the tokens, which are in our grammar. Uh, so for now, we just support numbers. And so we also should be recognizing always uh, from the cursor position, right? So initially, for example, the cursor stands uh, at the beginning. Let's say we have the string 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Um, uh, then we have to move forward until we reach some uh, known token, for example, number. And the next token here would be uh, some uh, identifier, ABC. And as you can see, it starts from the uh, current position of the cursor. So to make it more convenient, uh, let's put it into a variable string, uh, which will be uh, exactly from the cursor position, right? We slice the original string from the cursor position. And then the tokenizer actually works as a state machine. Uh, that's why, as we will see in the next lecture, uh, it's directly related to the regular expressions, which are exactly based on the finite automata that is on the state machines. So for now, let's make it uh, just completely manually, right? Um, if we recognized that the current character is a number, that is the isNan function returns uh, false, we're going to consume each character from the string, right, increasing the cursor position, uh, until we still have the digit, right, until we still have a number. And we collect uh, all the digits into the number token. And so then when we collected the number, we have to return the token for this number. And as we said in the previous lecture, tokens have the type and the value associated with this type. In this case, the type is the number, and the value is actually extracted uh, number, right, from multiple digits. Okay, that should be it for the numbers. Let's get back to parser and to require now our tokenizer module. In this case, we're going to introduce the constructor function for the parser, uh, where we initialize the tokenizer. That is, the same tokenizer will be reused for multiple strings. And we may also set the string in the constructor to the empty string. And then in the parse method, we're going to initialize the tokenizer. Right, We're going to pass the string to the tokenizer module, uh, which will reset the cursor uh, to the beginning of the string. And now we should talk about concept of the lookahead. Now, the recursive descent parser, which we implement in this class, is known as to be predictive parsing. What is predictive? Uh, it means it can predict specific production uh, based on the uh, based on looking ahead at the current token. So what we're going to do is to prime the tokenizer uh, by obtaining the first token, which is exactly our look ahead, which means we extracted the first token and based on the type of this token, uh, we will be able to route a parsing process accordingly. Now, since we need only one token to look ahead, uh, such parser corresponds to the uh, LL1 parser in the automated parsing theory. That is, we need only one look ahead to correctly predict uh, which production to parse. And now let's get back to a numeric literal. 
Instead of using the full string, uh, we're going to take the token from the tokenizer. Now, the numeric literal should expect, by its grammar rule, the number token, right? This is exactly what is written uh, in its uh, grammar rule. The numeric literal is the number. So let's introduce this function called it, uh, which will consume the current token and will advance the tokenizer to the next token. And uh, this it function uh, should exactly expect the current look ahead to be of this exact type. And now when we obtain the token, uh, we can use it in actual uh, value for the numeric literal production. And we take it from the token dot value, which should contain the number. And now let's implement the helper function it. And once again, this function uh, would check that the current token, that is the look ahead, uh, has exactly this type, which is passed as the parameter. And uh, since tokenizer may return null as, as for the token, and if we got into the state, uh, this means we reached the end of the string, but we expected something. And we exactly throw the syntax error, uh, unexpected end of input. Otherwise, if we do have token, but it's different type, we also throw the error unexpected token, and we expected something else. Once we have done all these checks, we can return the actual token. But before that, as we said, we have to uh, advance the tokenizer to the next token, that is update our look ahead. So once again, what is happening here, the program calls the numeric literal, uh, numeric literal calls the eat function, that is check that the current token is exactly the number, and advance the cursor. Once we get the token, we can return it um, as the token.value. Okay, that should be it. Let's go ahead and check that we still have uh, correctly working numeric literal. Let's go ahead and execute. And yes, we still have 42, which means our tokenizer works. So let's go ahead and introduce today the second type of literals, uh, known as the string literals. And with this, our program is becoming just literal. Right? We're going to have two types of literals. Uh, the literal is either the numeric literal or the string literal. Okay. And now let's go back to the tokenizer and add the string tokens. So let's start from the strings and support the strings in the double quotes. So if we determine that the current symbol is the double quote, which means we enter in the uh, string state, right? In this case, we're going to collect all the characters of the string. Let's use the variable s. And we basically go into the loop uh, by collecting just the characters. Uh, again, advancing the cursor. And so the stopping condition is we either reach the closing double quote or we are at the end of the file, that is, in the end of the string. So let's introduce this function is end of file, uh, which checks that we have reached the end of the string. That is, the cursor equals to the length. And once we are done, uh, we also have to consume the closing double quote. Right, and also append it to the string. And the token type in this case is the string, and the value is s. And now going back to the parser, to the literal node, uh, how do we determine whether uh, we're looking at the numeric literal or the string literal? Well, this comes exactly from the lookahead, right? So we check if the type of the lookahead is number, uh, this means we have to parse the numeric literal. Otherwise, if the lookahead token is of type string, uh, this means it's a string literal, pretty much simple. And we don't support yet uh, any other types of literals, so we throw syntax error, uh, unexpected literal production. And we already have uh, the numeric literal, let's add the string literal. Now the handler for the strings uh, is pretty much similar to the numbers. Uh, we have to eat the current string token, right? And instead of converting the value to the number, we just need to return the uh, value between of string quotation, right? We have to strip the quotes and return the actual value of the string. So we use the slice method uh, from one to negative one, that is the stripping the quotes. And the type should be, of course, string literal. Okay, sounds good, that should be it. So let's get back to our test runner and try parsing the string hello. Right, we put it into quotes. Okay, let's execute. And there we go, we have the strings now. Okay, let's check again the number, it still works. Uh, let's put number into the quotes, and we got the string 42, right? Not the number 42, but the string. And the string in JavaScript, for example, also may be used um, in single quotes, uh, which we don't support yet. And this is your first assignment, please go ahead and add uh, support for the uh, single quotes, uh, which should be pretty much the same.
So once again, today we introduce the tokenizer. Uh, let's again take a look at our numbers and strings in the tokenizer. As you can see, the handling is pretty much manual right now. And this manual handling looks pretty verbose. Uh, in fact, we implement here the manual state machine, right? We enter in some state, either the uh, number state and then spin in the loop for the numbers, or we enter the string state and spin in the loop for the strings. So uh, in the next lecture, we will refactor this manual handling and we'll introduce regular expressions. That is exactly what the tokenizers are about. That's it for today. Thanks and see you in the class.